What are we wasting our time talking about the cemetery business for? When Benson starts singing to the grand jury, we better start making funeral plans for ourselves. What's the matter, trailer? Can't you take a little heat? Want to see a little heat, Keeper? Cool. Oh, hey, come on, take it easy now. That's exactly why I don't allow guns at the conference table. This is a business meeting. Suppose we get back to business. That's my point. There ain't going to be any business when Benson gets through with us. I agree with you, trailer, but I'm ahead of you. We're going to take care of Benson so he won't say anything. Yeah? How are you going to get to him? You have to get past Commissioner McMillan first. Just know, trailer, that I'm ahead of you. Now, you worry about your territory and leave the rest to me. When is the last time the rest of you uh, businessmen checked the figures from your territories? Only $20 million in off-track betting, and that includes concessions. And the numbers are way off. Prostitution's way off, too. Trailer, hasn't anybody explained the new morality to you? Yeah, but I ain't buying it. Well, that's the trouble. Nobody's buying these days. Get the guns, Carstairs! No. No, Commissioner. Is this the end of Carstairs? I want you to meet our new partner, the Commissioner. Hey, what is this? What do you mean? McMillan is joining us? Well, in a manner of speaking, yes. The Commissioner has decided he'd rather switch than fight. I don't believe it. It's a trap. No, no trap. Gentlemen, I want you to meet the next police commissioner of San Francisco, Claudio Manton. Nice to meet you. Heard a lot about you, boys. You should have seen your faces. You really thought it was McMillan. <laughs> Blanks. What about the voice? He don't sound exactly the same. Ah, uh, we'll handle that. This thing has been in the works for a long time now, ever since I bumped into the commissioner in Palm Beach. First, I said to myself, you're going crazy. And then I said, Carstairs, my boy, this could be the way to get you past McMillan and deal with Benson. What about the eyes? There's something different with the eyes. Very observant trailer, a different color. And we have to do something about the brow, and I believe the hair has to have something done with it. Don't worry about it. I've got some ideas. There's still a little work to do. We'll handle it. We'll handle everything. <laughs> I bought you that one because you like the other one so much. Thank you. I thought that conversation stopper got lost in the cleaners. This is a new one Sally bought to replace the other. Do you know the cleaners swore they didn't lose it? Yes. I wonder who did. How about some eggs this morning, Commissioner? No, Mildred, thank you. I only have time for coffee. Okay. Enright's due here any minute with the latest doctor's report on Benson. How long do you think it'll be before you can see him again? Not until the day after tomorrow. You know, I'll be glad when this is over. You've only been working on it for about a year. Well, getting Benson to testify was a big break. Now all I have to do is get him safely to the grand jury, and then all I have to do is make sure he lives a long and happy life afterwards. Well, that's it, right. See, the commissioner's got good taste. Well, now you've seen the wife, the house, and his associate. I don't know about this tie. Huh? Well, that's the kind of a tie only a wife could buy. When does the uh, eye job get finished? All in good time, you guys. I think I'd have tackled this job if I couldn't handle it. You tackled it for a quarter of a million. I'll decide when and if you pull it off. Oh, he'll be ready, sir. The doctor said it was just a matter of days. How's he feeling? Fine. 
He asked for a shot of whiskey with breakfast this morning. You gave it to him, didn't you? I did. <laughs> that Benson's a gutsy little guy. He, uh, really trusts you, Commissioner. I know. And Carstairs will do everything in his power to get to him. No way. This place is maximum security. That's if anybody knew where he was. Yeah, well, let's keep it that way. The press has been asking an awful lot of questions, sir. Yeah, that's next. No, that is not what I'm saying, Miss Edwards. I said the investigation is proceeding as planned, and we're pleased with its progress. And we do hope to wind it up in the near future. Navarro, UPI. Mr. Commissioner, can you explain the delay in Harry Benson's testimony? We have other testimony to take as well. Benson will testify when we need him. Jones Daily Chronicle. Do you think with Benson's testimony, you'll be able to break up the Carstairs organization? I believe when all the information is in, the grand jury will be able to return an indictment. Smithers, Atlas Press. Carry the burden of the world, do you, Harry? Isn't it true that big money's trying to squelch this investigation, and that's the real reason for the delay? I'm sure you want to rephrase that question. I'll repeat the question, sir. Isn't it true that the real reason for the delay in the car stairs investigation is that someone's buying time? No one is buying anything, or on the take. And there's no delay. No one is buying anything. No one is buying anything. No. Now let's try it again. No one is buying anything. No one is buying anything. That's better. Or on the take. And there's no delay. Or on the take. And there's no delay. It's good. It's good, yeah. Let's go on. We're proceeding as planned. We feel we have the evidence to bring an end to the Carstairs operation. We're proceeding as planned. We feel we're bringing an end to the Carstairs operation. Still at it. Just a little touch-up work, bud. He's almost there. Almost is not good enough. We paid you plenty, O'Day. If this don't work, you not only don't play Vegas, you don't play, period. Well, he, he's going to be great. Just listen. And it will be presented to the grand jury at the appropriate time. Will be presented to the grand jury at the appropriate time. Hey, that's good. What do you mean good? He's perfect. Perfect? He's got it. 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 You got it. You got it. You got it. He's got it. He's got it. I can't wait for this guy to go back to Vegas. He makes me nervous. Hey, O'Day. O'Day! That'll be enough. We'll take care of you later. Pleasure working with you, sweetheart. If you want anything, just whistle. Well, so you're finally ready. To my villa, somewhere in Spain. Thank you, Commissioner McMillan. <laughs> it's going to be quite a coup for you, Commissioner. Benson's testimony, especially with Benson stashed away in a hospital. That's the one place Carstairs would never think of looking. What makes you so sure? Face it, Commissioner. He's had his crack and he missed. Why he's not even making a noise anymore. That's what worries me. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. You startled me. I was just putting this report on your desk. Where's Joan? She phoned in ill, sir. I'm Miss Jones, your temporary secretary. How is she? Well, I don't really know, sir. I, I don't think it's anything too serious. I presume Mrs. Wiggins has briefed you on our procedures. Oh, yes, sir. My letters of recommendation are with your morning mail. Oh, well, that's fine. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'll buzz you if I need you. Thank you. Yes, of course, sir. Oh, by the way, Commissioner, I confirmed your dinner reservation for tonight, 8 o'clock at La Poulette. How did you know my plan? Well, you, you wrote a little reminder on your desk calendar to check the reservation, and I just thought I'd save you the trouble. Well, you're much too efficient to be a temporary secretary, Miss Jones. A mind like yours deserves tenure. Well, thank you, Commissioner. Would you like your morning coffee now? I believe you take it black. Thank you. And cream and sugar for you, right, Sergeant? Yes, thank you very much. Be 
June always brings it to me black. <laughs> you, you always drink it. Well, I hate to make trouble. <laughs> All right. Forget you ever heard about La Poulette. Sally would never forgive me if I let business interfere with this evening. Is it a special occasion tonight, sir? Uh-huh. It isn't your wedding anniversary, is it? No, the wedding was several months later. You know, Charlie, I've been thinking. You should go out more. Really. You're never going to have an anniversary to celebrate unless you get started. Well, I'll get right on that, sir. <laughs> yes, it's a first-class job, all right. But when the good doctor does a job, it's always perfect. Nicht wahr? All right, all right, you're the best. Get on with it. The lids have healed perfectly. Now. Let me do it. I've worn contact lenses before. Gentlemen, I'll be on my way. Yes, thank you, Doctor. Joey. This is what he's going to wear tonight. Here's the watch and the ring in here. Now let's get to it. Goodbye, old friend. You arrive at the commissioner's office in the morning. You find out where they're keeping Benson. Arrange to have him transferred to safer quarters. We'll provide the police to pick him up. All you have to do is to make sure they hand him over to us. That takes care of tomorrow. What about tonight? There's a car waiting outside to take you to the restaurant. Good. I hear Frisco restaurants are excellent. And I'm looking forward to having dinner with that. <laughs> My wife. The exchange will take place after dinner. The less time you spend across the table from your wife, the better. You're in dangerous territory every time you're with her. Remember that. Oh, come on. I've been fooling women since I was 15. Now, listen, Manton. You're to spend as little time with her as possible. What I have in mind shouldn't take too long. She's going home by herself. You're going to invent some kind of a late meeting, and you'll spend the night in a hotel. That's too bad. The first time in my life would have been legit. Oh, well. Any other questions? Yeah. When do I collect the other half of my money? When the job's done. The car's waiting. You better get started. Please. Allow me to finish my champagne. I can't believe we're sitting here after all these years. What made you remember? What made you think I'd forget? Well, it's been a long time since that weekend you abducted me. Abducted? Well, isn't that what you call it when you're not married? Not for someone who acted as married as you did. Well, I was bluffing. When we stopped here for dinner on our way home, I thought it was probably the last meal that we'd ever eat together. Well, that doesn't say very much for the weekend. Well, your reputation preceded you. I thought I'd just become another number in your little black book. And to think I was sitting here wondering how I could ever get through another meal without you. Well, I was sitting across from you wondering if I'd ever hear from you again. Again. <laughs> this was a lovely idea. Unofficial anniversaries are the best. You know, this place hasn't changed at all. And neither of you. 
Oh, yes, I have. And I'm glad. Tonight, I know that no matter what I say or do, I'll be seeing you in the morning. Commissioner McMillan? Yes? There's a telephone call for you, sir. For me, are you sure? Yes, sir. There must be some mistake. You must have told someone. Only my secretary, but I told her not to call me under any circumstances. Well, maybe it's an emergency. Or Enright. I told him to take the night off, but somehow that's very hard for him to do. Where's the phone? Follow me, sir. Hello? Hello, Commissioner. Move. I'm sorry, I... Mac, what is it? Is everything all right? Perfect. There's an emergency downtown. I'll be in meetings most of the night. Oh, Mac, not tonight. You know I didn't plan it that way, but I have no other choice. Well, Mac, what happened? I'll tell you everything later. You take the car. I'll grab a taxi cab. About tonight, darling. I'll be very late, probably all night. You're obviously not telling me everything. I have to believe there's a reason. There is. Thank you, darling. I have to hurry. They're waiting for me. Mac, thank you for tonight. It was a lovely idea coming back here. Oh. oh, oh, hi, Matt. Oh, long time no see. Oh, hi. How have you been? Careful, you almost walked right into my car. I'm sorry. Well, what happened? I got dizzy. Why don't you let me run you over to the hospital? Oh, Angela no, Heaven's really, just I'm a couple fine. blocks from here. I'm fine. When's the last time you ate? Oh, I don't remember. Well, if you've had time to forget, you must be pretty hungry. Look, it's not your problem, really. Look, miss. I'm a policeman. I'm Detective Sergeant Charles Enright of the San Francisco Police Department. Are you going to bust me? No. I'm going to take you to dinner. He got called to a meeting. Said it could be kind of late. Might be all night. Sometimes I just don't understand him. What's to understand? He's a man. That says it all. He can be so sweet, so thoughtful. Flowers all over the house. The music on when I come in the door. He obviously knew how special this night was to me. 
He even ordered that same dinner that we had there that night. Fettuccine Alfredo. That was the first time I'd ever had it. Well, honey, that's the way they are. They remember the little things, they forget the big ones. Like coming home. I don't know how they got the number. He said he didn't leave it. Are you sure it was a they that called and not a she? You did say he'd work all night. Mildred, you know that I trust Matt completely. I know. That's why we make such a good team. I don't trust him at all. tonight, Commissioner? Front desk. Yes, Commissioner? Will you dial my home, please? Number is 555-0761. I'm sorry, Commissioner, but that is not a working number tonight. May I ask where you're going, Commissioner? For a little fresh air, if it's any of your business. Well, if it's fresh air you want, why don't I open the window for you? A walk wouldn't be as healthy. Your doctor ordered complete rest for tonight, you know? What doctor? I believe he said his name was Carstairs. You've obviously been misled about the salary of a police commissioner. What do you hope to get for me? Save your breath, Commissioner. We're not here to answer any of your questions. I feel I must warn you, the only person who missed me is my wife. Don't count on even her missing you, Commissioner. Shut up, Joey. Oh, I see I'm talking to a married man. I assume you speak from experience. You leave my wife out of this. I told you to shut up, Joey. Nobody makes cracks about my wife. I happen to love her. I don't care what anybody says. He wants to see you. Who's he? You'll meet him when he's ready. Oh, you mean Frank Carstairs?
Thanks, I... I've already eaten. This is really terrific, Sergeant. It's so nice to meet a cop who hasn't forgotten what it's like to be hungry. I don't think my stomach would let me forget. <laughs> I hope it doesn't cost you too much. I never think about money. Nah. <laughs> I'm sorry I haven't been better company. I guess I've just been too busy eating. Well, you're probably pretty tired, too. I'd be glad to drive you home. Where do you live? Well, nowhere now. I, I, I just left a place I've been sharing with some kids on Page Street. Do you work? I, I'm a waitress. Where? You really are a cop, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No more questions. Look, I know what you're thinking. I, I'm really not like that. I... I worked at the Blue Cafe, and I, and I went to art school, and, and I was living this place with some kids, and, well, everything just sort of crumbled on me. I lost my job, and this other chick moved in. They asked me to leave. So I called my old man. Your boyfriend? <laughs> no, my father. <laughs> <laughs> You really are nice. He lives outside Sacramento. Then you're going home? Yeah, if I can make it on time. He gave me the ultimatum. Sheila, you always say you're coming home, and, and you never make it. Make it tonight or forget it. That's where I was going when I walked into your car. Are you satisfied? Oh, come on now, don't cry. I'll drive you home. You mean all the way to Sacramento? Tonight? Sure. It's only a couple hours. Why not? Well, I uh, suppose we better get started. Uh, would you mind if, if I got some cigarettes before we left? No change. This always happens to me. Oh, well, here, let me get you some. You stay here and finish your coffee. But you haven't finished your coffee. Well, I'll be right back. Good. Thank you. Good evening, I mentioned. Well, as I live and breathe, Frank Carstairs. I was wondering when you were going to find time for me. Syndicate keeps you up late, I see. Oh, you know how it is, Commissioner. When you're in a position of responsibility, a lot of people depending on you. I did, but then you've relieved me of my responsibility. What's the next step? Kill me? Commissioner, how you talk. But I suppose in your line of work, one gets so used to violence. Well, what does one get used to in your line of work, Frank? Now you're prying. And to think I dropped in out of thoughtfulness to see if you had a good night's sleep. That means you don't need me dead till tomorrow morning. Oh, Commissioner, it's just violence, violence, violence with you, isn't it?
We're stopped. What happened? I can't keep my eyes open. I'll take a little nap. Would you be certain that the doors are locked? Sergeant? Sergeant? You're one sweet man, Sergeant. Jones. Cancel all appointments. Police security. Well, I'm sorry, Commissioner. We no longer have the Benson reports. You might try the sheriff's office. Yes, sir. Get me the sheriff's office. The sheriff is online, too, sir. This is Commissioner McMillan speaking. Mark, how you doing, partner? Great. You? I can't complain. Molly and I was a little disappointed about last weekend. Oh, those things happen. How's she feeling, anyway? Oh, well, you know, Sally can't keep her down. A lot better, thanks. Sally isn't feeling well? Well, didn't you just ask about her? Mike, last weekend you told me that you couldn't come over because your mother-in-law was ill. What's the matter? You get a better invitation? Oh, no, I... <laughs> you know how Sally is when someone in the family gets sick. She gets their symptoms out of sympathy. And I've been so worried about her, I completely forgot about her mother. Tell you the truth, I've been so preoccupied about this Benson investigation that I don't know what I'm doing half of the time. And that's why I'm calling you. I'm trying to get a rush report together for the mayor, and I'd like to get your fact sheet on Benson. Mac, you sure are preoccupied. We sent everything we had here to the Department of Correction last week, remember?